Israelis are casting ballots today to determine who will be the next leader of that country. It's the fifth election in four years there. Uh, centrist Prime Minister Yair Lapid is seeking to retain his seat as head of government, but right-wing challenger and former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is hoping voters will give him a second or even a third chance, depending on how you count. He was ousted from office after a no-confidence vote last year. For more on all of it, joining us now from Jerusalem is CBS News contributor uh, Robert Berger. Uh, Robert, uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, and good night all at once. I don't know what time <laughs> it is where we're speaking to you, but uh, actually I do. My kids live in Israel, so it's nighttime. Uh, is Netanyahu really coming back? Is that is that the talk? Definitely the talk. Uh, it's it's a very close race according to the polls. Netanyahu, 73 years old now, facing off with Yair Lapid, who is 58. Uh, but uh, he looks like he has maybe the best chance to form a government because he heads the, probably what will be the largest party in the Knesset, Israel's parliament. And that means if... Uh, he would have to form a coalition with other parties, but it appears that he might be in the best position to do that. And so then he would be appointed by Israel's president to try and form a government, which could take six weeks or more. But uh, he does look like he maybe is in the best position to do that. Having said that, let's remember there have been four elections already that he was appointed to form a government and failed to do so. And he that we could see a similar outcome this time. What about uh, some of the ongoing legal challenges that he's been facing? And tell us how that's playing into this election, along with other key issues. Right. That's that's really the big issue in the election is Netanyahu himself. It's a referendum on Netanyahu. And Netanyahu has been weakened by the uh, a corruption trial where he faces allegations of bribery, fraud, and breach of trust. And since then, uh, since these allegations and the trial, he really hasn't been able to form a government, and he's been weakened by that. A lot of Israelis say someone facing those kind of corruption charges shouldn't be allowed to serve as prime minister. However, Israeli law allows it. So he, he still has a strong base of support among the Israeli right, and that would include the ultra-Orthodox, and Jewish settlers, and nationalists, and they'll continue to support Netanyahu no matter what. You know, Robert, uh, if Netanyahu comes to power, uh, he has a uh, reputation for support of settlements, uh, a hardline approach to security, to the Palestinian question. Uh, it doesn't seem like anyone's talking about a two-state solution anymore. Uh, what is the prospect for peace after so many years, decades of violence there uh, in Israel between the Israelis and the Palestinians, if Netanyahu returns to power? Not very good. Uh, you know, interestingly, the peace process, which used to be a big issue in the Israeli elections maybe 10, 20 years ago, wasn't even, wasn't even really on the, on the agenda because the peace process is effectively uh, dead. Now, Netanyahu, if he does form a government, it will be probably more right-wing than any previous government because some of the more militant right-wing parties uh, now look poised to join a, a Netanyahu government. They oppose uh, a Palestinian state and even negotiations with the Palestinians. Hmm. Now, if Lapid can get back in as, as a center-left, and he uh, also he had an alliance with an Arab party in the last government, then you might see at least an attempt to revive peace talks with the Palestinians. Yeah, hard to get much done, though, with five mm -hmm. elections in four years. It's true. Tough to argue a mandate. Yeah. Robert Berger, thank you. Thank you.